So we've used loads of different visual representations so far this week. We've looked at fractions as and place on a number line and, and as parts and holes and pictures. We're going to piece all that together and use that to compare and order fractions. So finding equivalent fractions, seeing which fractions are, are larger and smaller. Um, and we're going to throw in a few different techniques for the ways that you can do that. And then I've got some tasks for you to have a go at that will extend you and also the opportunity to, for you to write some questions again. Um, just like normal, we're going to kick off with a bit of a recap from yesterday. So yesterday we were looking at fraction and decimal conversions and putting fractions on number lines. Um, and we came to have a look at this decimal number line and seeing how in our decimal system, in our counting system, we count in, we have a base 10 system. So we split our number lines into 10 jumps typically. And when we're counting in decimals, it would be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So an adjustment of how we count in ones and how that's very similar to counting in tenths. One tenth, two tenths, three tenths, and so on. And so three tenths and 0 0.3, for example, are equivalent. Um, however, we looked at then when we have different kinds of fractions where we don't break um, that gap into 10 pieces, but say into four or five pieces for quarters or fifths, uh, how we can't kind of directly apply the numbers in the same way. So for example, a half equals 0 0.5 and two is a different number to five. So how can that be the case? Well, how many 0.5s are there in one? There's two. And in a similar way, one quarter is equal to 0.25 because four lots of 0.25, two, three, four, makes one. Um, and again, we had these uh, conversions with fifths. So 0 0.4, for example, is the same as two fifths. 0 0.2 is one fifth. Um, so that when we have five jumps of a fifth, we get to um, one and five jumps of 0 0.2, we get to one. And we had a look at some questions like these ones here. So you might have seen this from yesterday. Uh, this might be the first time you've had a go at this one. Uh, odd one out. So for this pair, which one is the odd one out? For this pair, which one is the odd one out? It might be a fraction or it might be a decimal. Uh, pause the video and have a go. Okay, and uh, when you're ready, let's have a little look. Um, so 0 0.6, 0 0.35 and 3 fifths. Um, well, if I bring up those number lines again, I can see here 0 0.6 is here, 0 0.35 is here. So one of them must be the odd one out, which is equivalent to 3 fifths. We can see 3 fifths here. It is 0 0.2 is 1 fifth, 0 0.4 is 2 fifths, 0 0.6 is 3 fifths there. Um, so the odd one out must be 0 0.35. Um, now an eighth, 0 0.08 and 8 hundredths. Well, it will be around about here. It's a little bit less than 0 0.1. Um, and actually that can be represented by 0 0.08 or as 8 hundredths. So rather than splitting into tenths, if I want to go more precise here, um, I, I might need to split that into hundredths. So um, that would be 10 hundredths there, 8 hundredths there. Now, what about an eighth? Well, let's take this number line. Let's split it into eight equal pieces. Each piece will be just a bit more than 0 0.1 there. Um, so the odd one out there is an eighth. Now for the extend challenge, I just wanted to run through this. And again, you might well not have seen this, but it was this. Make all the fractions that are more than 0 0.5 and less than 0 0.75 using these numbers. So we had two, three, four, five, six, and eight. Um, how many ways could you find was the challenge. Um, so let's have a look at that, and I'm going to I'm going to put these um, these fraction lines on as well. So we've got this decimal line here for going, for going from zero to one, and here I can see a third and two thirds, and uh, the quarters and the fifths. And so we're looking in this band here of more than zero point five and less than zero point seven five. So I can see there that one solution is two thirds, another is three fifths. Notice that it's more than half because two is more than half of three. And three is more than half of five, so it must be more than 0 0.5, more than halfway. Um, three quarters is not less than 0 0.75, it is equivalent to 0 0.75. Um, so there, we've got two solutions so far, and we've looked where we've used three, four, and five as the denominator. Well, what about six and eight? Well, if I was thinking about sixths, I could take this line that's just in thirds and, and put halfway points in, uh, in, in there to see if I can figure that out. And so one that will be equivalent to two thirds will be four sixths. Um, and then uh, eighths as well. I could take this number line, imagine it into eight pieces there. And it would be this one here I would have as well. 
So my other possible answers, four sixths and five eighths. So the main focus today is on ordering and comparing fractions. So as normal, lots of different images. We're going to use a number line image. We're going to use the fractions of shape images, and it will give you lots of different tools for ordering and comparing different fractions. And we'll look at different techniques for doing so as well. So as ever, you can be a really flexible thinker. Um, now, the first thing is decimals are not equivalent to other decimals. That might sound an odd thing to say, uh, but let's say, for example, let me give you two decimals. Uh, let's say 0 0.37 and 0 0.5. They're not equivalent to other decimals. Now, you could say 0 0.5 is the same as 0 0.50, and that's a little bit like saying 50 is the same as 50.0. But decimals are not equivalent to other decimals. So 0 0.37 is 0 0.37, and if you have a bit more, you have a different decimal. But decimals and fractions can be equivalent. Now, let's say, for example, I could say hello, or I could say bonjour, and I'm saying the same thing. I'm just saying it in two different languages. Um, now, th that's similar-ish here. So if I'm saying decimals and fractions can be equivalent, let's look at 0 0.4 and 2 fifths. That is the same distance along this number line here, um, on each number line. So they are the same. It's the same way of saying, um, it's a different way, sorry, of saying the same quantity. Um, now, decimals and decimals can't be equivalent, but fractions and other fractions can be equivalent. By equivalent, meaning equal, like the same. Um, so you can get fractions written in different ways, but that represent the same amount. So have a look at these examples here. Thirds and sixths. So two thirds and four sixths. Well, that's the same distance along this line. So, so they're the same. You see here, the only difference is here. We're splitting the line into three jumps and here we're splitting it into six jumps. So two sixths is the same as one third. So one third and two sixths will be the same two-thirds and four-sixths will be the same, even though none of the numbers are the same in the fractions. Now, let's have another look at that in this way. So here's two-thirds, and this time we're looking at fractions of shapes, because I've got two boxes of three equally sized boxes. Um, and two-thirds is the same as how many sixths? Um, so that's just the example that we've seen. So there, if I just broke down the uh, the thirds into in half, then we'll have four sixths and we can see that we have the same amount uh, overall the whole and the parts have been the same size and so those fractions are equivalent they're the same so two thirds will be how many fifteenths pause the video and how would you, how would you work that out or maybe think how will the picture change when i'll try and demonstrate that Okay, well, the rule that we give is we say, well, if I want to make two thirds and see what it is in fifteenths, what I'll need to do is I'll need to multiply the top and the bottom by the same amount. So I'll need to multiply three by five to get to 15 and two by five to get to 10. But why is that? Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break up this box into equal parts. So we have 15 parts in total. At the moment, it's in three parts. And I'm going to break up the uh, the orangey boxes in just the same way that I'm going to break up the white one. So have a look. There. Can you see? I've split each box into five pieces. Five pieces here, five pieces here, five pieces here. I did the same to the white bit as I did to the orange bit. Um, so in total, we've now got this fraction not out of thirds as it was before, but in fifteenths. Um, and it is ten fifteenths. So in finding... Um, equivalent fractions, we use multiplication. And if we're going the other way around, we'd use division. Okay, so here, explain the mistake. To make equivalent fractions, do the same thing to the denominator and the numerator. So this child thinks that three quarters is the same as seven eighths, because they've added four to the numerator and to the denominator. Uh, pause the video. What mistake's been made? Well, let's have a look and let's have a look at three quarters and compare it to seven eighths and to what the answer should have been. So there's three quarters and we can actually see it's, it's equivalent to six eighths because um, I don't just do the same thing to the numerator and the denominator, but I've got to multiply by the same number. And why? Because this line is split into four pieces and this line is split into eight pieces. So to work out um, for quarters how many eighths, I actually have to multiply the top and the bottom by two. Because can you see it's splitting, it's doubling. Each section is double the number of pieces. Um, and can you see that seven eighths is not the same as three quarters, it's larger. 
3 quarters is the same as 6 eighths, their equivalent. Now, I want to show you a few different ways that you can compare fractions. So we've looked at finding fractions that are the same, and sometimes when we're comparing fractions, we might realise that those fractions are the same. Um, but th another thing we're going to look at today is ordering fractions, which are larger, which are smaller. So my first technique is think about compare the fractions to 0 and to 1. So let's say if I'm comparing a sixth and a fifth, I might think, well, let's compare them to how far away they are from 0. I can see that a sixth is a smaller distance away from 0 than a fifth, so a fifth is larger. But equally, if I'm comparing 5 sixths and 4 fifths, they're actually quite a long way from 0. It might be easier thinking, how far are they away from 1? And in a similar way, 5 sixths is a sixth less than 1, whereas 4 fifths is a fifth less than 1, and a fifth is a bigger jump less. So the larger fraction there will be 5 sixths. Now, another technique that we can use is finding the same denominator. So let's say I'm comparing 3 fifths and 11 fifteenths, and I want to know which one's larger. Now, I'm going to show you a picture which will make it clear that actually 11 fifteenths is larger. But here I've got 3 fifths, and here I've got 11 fifteenths. Well, what I could do there is I could think, well, I want to get... Now, imagine you hadn't seen these pictures. I could think, well, I want to get this 3 fifths into seeing what it would be out of 15. And in that case, I just need to think, well, I'm going to have to multiply this 5 to make it out of 15 by 3 there. And that will show me that actually 3 fifths is the same as how many fifteenths? It's the same as 9 fifteenths. So something I can, one thing that I can do is I can multiply to make the same denominator to compare fractions. Now, there's another technique that I use, which is called benchmark measures. Now, I'm just going to give you a little clue. Benchmark measures is about thinking, oh, could this fraction be more than or less than? Um, and we're going to look at this one in a moment. But I just wonder if you could think, which one naturally do you think looks larger, 4 tenths or 8 fifteenths? And how did you know? Uh, pause the video. Okay, and when you're ready, uh, play again. Now, maybe it was you thought, well, I can make each fraction out of 150. The calculation is quite challenging there. Now, my suggestion is this. Using benchmark measures, I can think, well, what about half? This is actually less than half because 4 is, uh, is less than halfway to 10. And 8 is uh, 8 fifteenths is more than half because 8 is more than halfway to 15. So actually, I don't even need to find any equivalent fractions there or do any calculation to know that actually 8 fifteenths must be more than 4 tenths. I'm just using a benchmark measure, and my benchmark is a half. Now, uh, we're going to finish this video with these examples here. Rank by difficulty. F so for each pair, circle the larger fraction, or, or work out which fraction is larger. And what I want you to think is, which question was hardest, which was easiest, and what which different techniques did you use to work that out? Um, how do the questions differ from one another? Um, so pause the video and have a think about that one. OK, now, I don't want to say which is harder or easier, because, of course, that's a bit of a matter of opinion. The one that I found the easiest was, was the one where it's out of sevenths, because I can, I can tell we've got the same denominator, so I just know five sevenths is one seventh more than four sevenths, so five sevenths is, is more. Then I can compare two sevenths or two ninths. Now, that can seem slightly harder. We've got the same numerator here, but, of course, ninths are smaller than sevenths. So um, ninths will be less and two sevenths will be more. That will be the larger fraction there. With two thirds or three quarters here, I could think, well, how far away from one are they? And actually three quarters is closer to one because it's only a quarter away from one, whereas two thirds is a whole third away from one, which is a larger piece. Whereas four fifths or 11 fifteenths, what I would typically do here is I would think, well, let's make both of these fractions out of 15. I'm going to, so we've got a common denominator, I can compare them then. I'm going to make this one out of 15. To do that, I'll have to multiply the top and the bottom by 3. Um, so 4 fifths would be 12 fifteenths. So 4 fifths must be larger than 11 fifteenths. So just as normal, to bring open your tasks, click on the blue link underneath this video. Um, we've got a task A and a task B today. Um, so both start with odd one out. So have a look at these examples here, the, the number lines here, the two number lines and these two uh, shapes. Uh, which of those is the odd one out? 
um, have a think about the some of uh, our equivalent fractions one isn't see if you can work that one out we've got an explain the mistakes question for you to give a reason for and then uh, we finish with a rank by difficulty question and the extend task is to design your own rank by difficulty question I would love to use some of them in next week's uh, videos. That would be really, really great. So again, if you can design them up, particularly questions where you use different strategies to compare the fractions. Um, now, the one I'm going to explain a little bit more on task B, the others are similar structure, is this one and this little prompt at the bottom. So there's three questions here that you need to fill the gaps in um, by positioning three of these uh, digits in these places. Now notice this little extend task at the bottom that adds a lovely layer of extra challenge if you can manage it. Which of these questions can be answered in different ways? So um, can none of the questions be answered in different ways or one of them or two of them or can all of the questions be answered in different ways? So there's a real challenge. The answers are at the bottom. I'm really looking forward to using a lot of your questions in the, uh, in the videos next week. As always, it's been wonderful having you this week. Uh, just a little confession, as I always say, these videos are mainly yours. Um, I've not been able to put a lot of your work in this week, because basically, I actually, this week, I had to prepare the videos quite a long time in advance. But what I'd really like to do is get the questions that you've put together from Friday's video, and I would love to use them on Monday. Um, I'll make sure that I make space for that. Um, so, really looking forward to receiving them. It'd be great to have you back on Monday. Have a fabulous weekend.